Uh, after we know what a uh, random variable is, that x, the usual x, then we or hit. And then we can define the probability distribution function. And again, there's a there's kind of a fancy word. Uh, let, let me go, let me bring you back to the family concept. Uh, usually we have um, some bus space. We need all the, 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 the outcomes. There's a put as individual element. In that set, in this case, there are six numbers, six outcomes. And usually in that model, we think we treat each outcome as equally likely. We can compute things nicely. And I say, what, what if we don't, we don't think of it this way? If we have a different definition or different ways to look at the sample space. And this is where the random variables come in. Yeah, we have outcomes, we still have outcomes, but now we look at the pattern among those outcomes and couch them. And here we're gonna also define how we can actually count those outcomes. So first, oh yeah, let me remove the node that I the, the motivation is that um, we, we mentioned that p of x itself like, is meaningless. Like, it's not a complete sentence. You are, ask me, you are asking me to count something, but you don't tell me. Exactly. Supposed to count. So you're going to have to add a number. If it's meaningless, but once you get even a number, like, even if, let's say you write as x equals 3. Then, then this is, this is something that I can count and give, give you the, the, the answer. answer. And now, now you're asking me to find the probability that some variable is 3. And now, and now that variable is fixed to be 3. And then you, and can, you can take a look at all the outcomes. How many of them are there? So it is, is um, almost always in this case, in, in, in this form, like p of x equals to 3. Or maybe maybe an, a, at, some at some point you might count p of x greater than 7, p of x less than equal to 4. But for now, we, we just, just focus on the equal, equal side. side. And you can you, you can see that if you if you write that a lot, okay, maybe we apply p of x equals to 3, p of x equals to 4, p of x equals to 5, then again it's getting, you know, wordy. And, and tedious. So, so but if, if, if you know that, that if, if let's, let's suppose, suppose we write as a person, okay, let's okay, let x be something, 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 and we do it just a single variable, variable x, then we can upgrade it further and just write the numbers. numbers. And again, again, this, this, this is meaningless. Like right? P of 3 is meaningless. 3 is a number, 3 is not an event. But again, if you know. If, if, if you establish, establish like, what is the variable we are thinking about, then when you read P of 3, you can think, oh, it's, 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 we are talking about the variable x, and P of 3 means the cases when x is 3. So this is what we use sometimes. Okay, like in short. <laughs> And, and since we can, and the next the next um, um, keyword is yes, if, if since, since we can find p x equals equal to x for all possible values of outcomes, or for all possible values x, or sorry for all possible values k. k. Uh, for for instance, if you roll two, two dice, dice right, and then x let x be the sum, then we can find p of x equal to one, p of x equal to two, and so on and so forth. Then for each probability. We get, we get a single, single number. number. P, of P of x equals 1 is 0, zero because, because it is impossible for the sum to be 0. P of x equals to 2 is 1 over 36, and so, and so, and so forth. And we can we create, create a, 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 table a table that has, has all, the, all the possible values of k, or all, or all the possible values of the random, or the random, random variable, then, then we can Usually, like when, when you, if, if you have a table, then you can turn, you can translate into a graph, and the graph would be um, 
the in the axis that this is a value k, k that we have on the left on this case k will be one three four five six and on and up to twelve but actually let me let me start at one then because oh sorry let me start at two but that's one axis this is the value of k or you can write it further like you can for the sum like this is the the, the, the the value of that particular random variable <coughs> and then for the oops, for the vertical axis usually the y axis this is where we plot the probability of that particular event like for instance if we know that the probability that the sum is 2 is 1 over 36 then we can write kind of like a bar chart and this mark or this thing would be 1 over 36 but now it is even personally, personally i find this graph to be easier to read than the table of values and variables Okay, so, so for this k, k you can ask you can, can find the sum for you can find the probability that the sum is 2 and then you can put, put that probability into the y axis and then you can repeat that for every single possible values of k and for 3 you can compute that to be 2 over 36 and then for 4 you get 3 over 36 and so on and so forth all the way up to 12. You can see that I'm drawing as I can to plan in advance. In this perfect, I need 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now that, that, that this set of information may become a graph. And that looks, looks nicer, nicer, I guess. And, 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 and also, also we can we can, can then compare the the, the likelihood of each of, of each event whether it's slowest whether it's highest whether it's equal to something else. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do here in the second in the second part. Like, is it helpful to plot a graph of k or such p of k? The value of the random variable was such the probability for that, that variable to equal to that <coughs> and this thing, this graph, is what we call a function that's why the function we, you know, plot with x and y and there are lines up and down and this is also a function, right, there are two x's let's say it is the x or the unknown y is the, the outcome of the function or indeed the, the outcome is the probability of that event and so that's here we have a function we return everything we know into a function into a nice graph right and and that's why the the formal definition is the the function and that's why we have the word f and then what we have probability distribution function so the, so the function, function is saying, saying that, that we are writing a graph while well, we are having a relationship between two numbers. numbers. Probability <laughs> mean yeah. yeah. We, are talking, we are dealing with probability, probability. and distribution. It means we are talking about all, all the possible. possible. <clears throat> actually, we, we talk, talk about this distribution. And how high or how likely each event And so we have this fancy keyword. That's simply a, a way to you know to condense the information we have by as separate events into a single graph. A single graph. And we f we abbreviate that as PDF, which you may mistake that for a particular file extension. But, but anyway, anyway yeah, we have this function. function. And from, from now we're gonna talk about functions. And, functions. and, and 
Uh, this is the the the, the, the real application. Like we have, we have probably we want to work on and then turn that into a function. But, but in, in math, it, it, it has a kind of a like inwards. We can talk. We can say, oh, any random function is satisfying this criteria. These these two criteria. In any kind of function, it could be a probability distribution function. If it satisfies, it has two characteristics. My first is that each probability is between zero and one, inclusive. Inclusive means it can be zero and one. Which makes sense, right? If whenever you talk about probability, then it needs to be between zero and one. Why it doesn't make sense? And the second is that the sum of all probabilities is 1. This is 1. Which again makes sense, right? Otherwise, you can't. Like if you have 50% chance to get a hand and 50% chance to get a coin, 50% chance to get a lot, then these numbers don't add up. And so, so any kind of function that like like could be a probability distribution function if it has these two, two properties. Uh, but again, usually, if, if, if you have a problem, like, like if you start from, from, from a problem, and if you write, write everything correctly, correctly then, then the result is um, the PDF by definition. In the first place. You don't even, even have to care about this definition. definition. If, if you start from, from the problem, problem and you have full enough, enough to listen everything, and to, to compute, compute everything correctly. <coughs> so there's a um, PDF, but, but yeah, again, again, it's too abstract. abstract. So, so let's let's, let's, let's take a look at let's take a look at an example. example. Actually, this is an, an example like of how we can produce the PDF probability distribution function. And, and let's take a look at uh, another example here. So, let, let me let me go ahead and oh, oh actually, actually we did we didn't talk about the PDF. But anyway, as, as long as you can list everything correctly, correctly and write a graph and and, and draw a graph, and you see the, 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 the correct scale and correct axis, axis then, then you are doing fine. So let's take an, an example here. here. So, so let's x be a little value or a single die row. First, we find all possible outcomes x, uh, for all possible outcomes x, by p of x equal to x. And actually, then let me go back to using k because we use above, right? But in, in fact, you can use any any number, any variable for the number. Let's make sure that. <coughs> we, have we have a capital, capital letter for the variable, and then we have a, the usual, usual or the small letter for a number. Oh, so what is the, the first question to do? do? Like like it's asks us to list all the, the possible outcomes. <coughs> like so, so uh, um, usually, like it, it is not required. Like, like it is not the definition, but I is recommend you write this way. So first, you have an x. <coughs> or you have a k, <coughs> and then you, you list all the possible values of k on the top, and then you have to go, go back, back to read the, the to read the variable, and, and see what are what what, what values are. In this case, x be the value of a single die row, zero or single die, right? There could be one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then only six, six possible outcomes. <coughs> and, and then, then to find P of X equals to K, and you, you, list, you list the probability in the second line. <coughs> it, uh, uh, for instance, in the, the first entry here, you, you find P of X equals to 1. And, and it is where you put that number in. And for a single die roll, or I should also add the word fair. Go fair die. And this one six. 
with the probability that the value is 1 is 1 sixth. So you put it there, but we, we, we didn't have to actually compute anything yet. And then we can see that everything is 1 sixth. But for this, it's a mod 2 in this case. So, so that's uh, uh, the first, first question. question. Now we, we have all the possible um, um, values of this particular random variable. Yes. That's so that's, that's one. one. <clears throat> then, then for, for two, two we can use this table to find um, um, these three appropriate events. events. Okay, for, for the first event, 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 the first event we want to find the probability that the value is one. one. And, and you can, can if, if you have this table, table and you, if you put everything in the table correctly, then you, you can, can just refer to the table, table you have. So P, P of x equals to 1 is asking for this single, single entry. entry. This single box. This, this single case, so it's one. I don't think to do here yet. yet. Then, then if you, if you, if you ask for the probability that the value is at least 5, the value is greater than or equals to 5. And then, <coughs> and usually, um, you sh again, again, just use turn that in inequality sign into separate events in this case. <coughs> because, um, again, usually, like, when, when, you, when, when you have this kind of x is greater than or equals to 3, but you can turn that into the union x plus 3 or x plus 4 or x plus 5 and so on. <coughs> so that's how you get <coughs> separate events. But and here we can now we can write separate events. There are two events here. And then we can count oh, that we are talking about these two events. Even the sum is 5, which is 1, 6. And then, and then when the sum is 6, that's the probability of 1, 6 as well. So the sum is now 2 over 6. That's P of B. Sorry, that's so let's, 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 let's 2B. P of X greater than or equal to 5. And lastly, for C, P. Sometimes you, you, can, you can write that as a, as a sentence. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you have a um, variable somewhere. somewhere. For C, we are looking Think for the probability, probability where the, the value is R. R. And, and here, here we can simply listen more. Again, again because, because you can see, okay, there are only six, six cases, cases for okay. But okay. okay. So, so when it's so odd, it, it, it has to be either one or three, three or five. five. Okay. Oh, sorry. And again, everything is 1, 6, so we can easily compute the sum. Get 3, 6. That's the example. First, list all possible values of x. So I use of the variable, and then, <coughs> then you can, can use that to answer several questions relating to the variable x. And, and it is a basic one when everything has equal chance. And you, 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 you may think that, oh, this, this is what we did already. Isn't it? And, and, and the answer is, yes, you are correct. We did that already. But you know, back then we think of them as that's if you think about odd, odd number, you get that. that. That's, that's, that's <coughs> so, so back then we think of them as outcomes. outcomes. But here we think of them as variables. We don't care about individual outcomes anymore. Do you see that in the in the next example? Okay, let's take let's take a look at the next example. Okay, so let's let y be the sum of values when rolling two dice. So first, yeah, we don't freak out yet. We we change the the, the name of the variables because 
Of course, of course we are allowed to. to. X is something special, we just commonly use X. But when you have different variables, sometimes it's better to have a different name for it. In this case, since X, X is a single die, use Y to represent two dice. And we have two similar questions. At first, we are asked to list all the possible outcomes. Of all the possible values of oh, again, let me change that to k. <coughs> and what are all the possible values of that variables or the, the domain if you know that word? And then, all right, the probability of those. So, for one, I need to do similar to what we did. So, you have to think. It is it what you think? Like no, no, no math yet. yet. Okay, okay, what are the possible sums? Can you get a sum of one? Uh, no, no, I think we, we, we just mentioned that. that. If the the, the, the minimum, minimum value, the, the, the minimum the minimum value for, for the sum is two, two. Because, because there are two dice, dice and each, each of them has the minimum value of one. The first one is two. So you start from two. And then you have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on. Until you run out of spaces. In this case, yeah, you can listen. They are up to 12. And both the dice has value 6. And now we have how many? 11. 11 values of this variable. <coughs> So, so we, we, are, uh, we are now ready to fill, fill in the gap. gap. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay, but why? The sum can be those for you, and then we refine probability, probability that the variable is equal to k. k. And, and yeah, this is where you, you, you need to use some, some kind of tool to, to help, help you, because you, you cannot do this to you in your head. And as you do, do this a lot already, then you can. can. And that's a tool. It's, 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 it's not a definition, definition or it's not a, a particular method, but the tool when we use the like imagine dice. It said we put, put a, a table, table. <coughs> of all the, the possible values of dice. Let's, Let's say this green one is the first die. Yeah, the, the orange one is the second die. And we, we know, know that there are 36 outcomes so we're gonna have a grid of 36 values <coughs> and usually like back then if you if you want to write all the part, all the outcomes you would write them as numbers this one one ever sends to case with the first dice one and the second dice one Next we, we had the case on the first dice two, the second dice one, first dice three, three the second dice one, one. That's and so, so far. And you can read list them all. But, but in this case, we don't we don't care about the yeah we don't care about the value of individual dice. We care about the sum. So, so we can fill the table with the sum instead. Maybe that is a fine sense in the first. In the, in the first entry, entry like we, we, we had this represent the case when both dice one. one. But, but then, then that is the case when the di the, when the sum is two. Maybe they should assume that it can be cost. Yeah, that is. Both die. And then the sum is two. So you fill in the value of two. That's the k. Fill the table letter. And then the next part, when the first die is two, and then when the second die is one, that gives you three. When the, the sum is three. And then you repeat that throughout the whole table. Sometimes you you, you might, to, just to be sure, you might want to write the outcome first and then write what number you want from those outcomes. In this case, it is, it is um, simple enough to just, you know, add these two numbers up, so. Let's just do it. So we can do the rest. 
3 minus 4, 3 minus 2 is 5, 3 minus 3 is 6, 3 minus 4 is 7, 3 minus 5 is 8, 3 minus 6 is 9, and so on and so forth. And 12. And now we fill out the table of the, the table for the variable y. In this case, we don't care about individual dice anymore. We care about the sum. And now we can use that table to help us um, fill the table for the function. We're going to need to use the compute stuff. For instance, the, the first one of this. Yeah, okay. The first entry, like which when y is 2. And then you look at this whole table and, and count. How many cases are there? That's the sum is 2. And the answer is 1. There's only 1. Particular case. Out of 36 cases. So we have one. This is the case when the sum of two dice is two. We abbreviate the whole sentence into just this notation. And then you can compute that. Okay, let's move on. What about three? Look at this whole table and count how many entries. Three. Two entries there. Yes. Two, two and one and one and two. two. That's two, two over size six. And then, and then you can, can repeat that. that. Like if you have enough, enough time, time, you can do. But, but it, 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 if, if you if you notice something, something nice, nice is that, that uh, numbers that are the same uh, are in the same, same diagonal. Three is in the same diagonal. Four is in this diagonal five. Diagonal. five. Is in this diagonal, six is in that diagonal, and so on. And so once is it pattern, then is it easier to count? So for four, we count this diagonal. We see that there are three cases, in a four, which are three and one, two and two, and one and three. That's three. And then for five, there are four cases. For six, there are five cases. For seven, there's six cases. For eight. Right, right now we get, get to, to the smaller diagonal, diagonal the, the lower half, lower, lower right half, and that, that becomes eight. eight. That helps now. Then we have four, then three, then two, and then, then one. one. That's the, the, the first, first question. question. For all, all the, the possible values of, of the sum, sum we list all the probability. Mm -hmm. Of those, those, um, of those, those values. values. That's one. We mark that. <laughs> That's one. one. Put that. And, and then for two, two like, once, once we, we have, have this table, table and then, then we can find uh, we can find probabilities of particular events using the sum. For the, the first one, p of y equals to three. That's simply that's simply this entry. This single entry. Which is 2 over 36. You can also get that from, you know, from the table itself. Right, but it is convenient because we need that over and over again, so... It's better to just write the whole table. And for B, we look at events with sum is less than or equals to 4. And you can, again, look at the table or you can split them into put them into cases. cases. If, if it's, it's less than or equals to 4, then it could be a 4, or it could be a 3, or it could be a 2, but it can be, it could be 1 or something. So it's a 3 case. For this event, you can see right away that, oh, it's um, 3 over 36 plus 2 over 36, which is 6 over so and so that's that. And you can see that it each event and now has a different uh, different probabilities. 
Yes, yes for me. And, and lastly, for C. This is when. This is some fancy, fancy mess. Don't find a chance when y is a square. Look, look at the square point. number. And this, this is when, when you have to think about it. Think about it for a little bit. Okay, so, so oh, a square could be a one or a four because four is two square. Then three square is nine. Oh, it's, it's a four. Then three square is nine. Then four square is sixteen. And so on and so forth. You might want to write them, write them all, but you can, you can filter them out because um, it is not possible to get a 1. That's too low. And it is not possible to get a 16 because that's too high. You only have 2 dice, not 3. So, if this statement implies these two cases. And now we can look up there and look at the two cases. When it's 4, we have 3. Over the thirty six. Yes. When it's nine, 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 nine here, so it's four, four over thirty six. And the sum of those two events is seven over thirty six. So that's the answer for C. C. <laughs> so here's how we can construct the, the table, table and construct a function, and then. then you start to answer several questions. Okay, so that's um yeah, yeah that's, that's it for the for the next issue. And then we, we have the exercise that you can try yourself here.